Contact sighted. Contact in his usual place. Anyone hear that? Understood. We heard. Still no sign of suspect. Hold it. Suspect out of lift. Here we go. Yeah, suspect approaching contacts car. Contact made. Right, it's all yours now. Go. Sitting ducks. Peking ducks are where we almost got squashed flat. Are you sure they didn't see the sun glinting off your binoculars, Fox? No, off your makeup mirror, darling. Oh, very witty. Shut up! Both of you. You went in right away. As soon as we got the call. I saw Glazinov drive up and park in his usual place. I saw Miller go up in the lift. He approached the car. I called them. I said, contacts made. They moved in at once. But neither Miller nor Glazunov were in the car. Somehow they got out and left two dummies. Well, I didn't see them go. They must have crawled out on their hands and knees. What's the word on Roddy? Still in intensive care. I want your reports by the end of the day. Mrs. Forbes. Someone goofed, Maggie. I know. I don't care about Miller. He's fourth division stuff, leaking low-grade bump to pay off his mortgage. What I do care about is who tipped them off. That worries me a lot. Look, how do I know that it wasn't down to me? We had three months surveillance on that man. It was a long haul. I could have shown my hand. I just don't know, Nigel. Sit down, Maggie. Maggie's been in there a hell of a long time. She must be taking a lot of stick. Could be. I think we're getting the blame. Could be. You reckon it was our fault? Could be. Is that all you can say? Could be. Could be. Hey, Maggie. Do you want something to eat? No, no, no. Look, you must eat something. Hi, girls. How's Trix? Trix is pregnant. She says it's yours. Funny. Look, um, no hard feelings about, you know. What's the matter with her? Look, be a dear and get lost. There's a good chap. My mistake entirely. You look tired. I'm all right. Why don't you pop off? Oh, for God's sake, leave me alone. I'm sick and tired of being treated like a damn child. Hey, John. Out of my way. I've never seen him like this before.
take him. I'll stay with this one. Where is he now? Well, where the hell do you think he is? I don't know, Maggie. You haven't told us yet. He's got an office at the Ministry of Defence. Goes to lunch about one. Don't lose him. There have been enough cock-ups lately. We'll meet at the park at 6.15. minutes late. Well, she got to. Ah! Samantha, look what you made the lady do. Do you feel all right? I have no idea where she is. I suggest you both go home. We go home. I'm getting big, bad vibrations. I mean, she always shows up. The doctor's report says pulse rate regular, Blood pressure average, everything normal. He thinks the trouble may be mental exhaustion. Can we go and see her? No, not yet. Mental exhaustion? Why? Who knows? Overwork, perhaps. So what do we do? Report at the desk, take routine duties for a few days till we know more about her condition. Get me Miles Bennett, the department psychiatrist. What can you tell me about her? Ex-police, high achiever. Hardly a foot wrong since she joined the department, except for this last business. Perfectionist who can't handle failure. Of course. You've diagnosed her immediately. <laughs> Where shall I send the bill? And where do you think you're going? I must see Nigel, it's urgent. Back into bed, please. No, leave me alone. I must see Nigel. I remembered. They put something in my drink. Now, let's get back into bed, shall we? I must let Nigel know what happens. Nigel? Who's that? Your husband? Husband? No. Look. It's important. He must know. He must know. What's her security clearance? The highest. On the night she cracked up, she was meant to make a collection from a dead letter box. Big stuff. Very. Our man at the Soviet trade mission was coming up with a list of all their moles in Whitehall. Not more. More. Nigel, your service has more holes in it than a whore's tides. The list was left in a DLB on Clapham Common, in the roots of a tree. Mrs. Forbes was meant to collect it. She wasn't told the contents, merely that a drop would be made and she had to pick it up. So, when she was found and taken to hospital, there was nothing on her. When we later checked the DLB, empty. Maybe Boris didn't show. He showed. 
We'll ask him to give you a copy. We would, if we could find him. He's vanished. Then where is the list? That's what you want to know. This is where you earn your Margot 64. Anything broken? No. Yes. My watch. I'll buy you another. How do I look? Well, your days as a male model are numbered. But I prefer the ragged look. What in God's name went wrong, Tess? I don't know. I must run. Be back tonight. Do you want anything? I do. But it'll wait. Looking better. The lies people tell in hospital. Roddy's off the danger list. Is there anything you want? Yes, there is. What? I want to get out of here. Well, you're meant to be resting. What do you think I've been doing for the last three days? Taking it easy, I hope. Nigel, can you tell me when I can expect to leave this place? As soon as you get dressed. Thank you. I can't wait to get back to work. I said you could leave hospital. I didn't say anything about going back to work. Where am I going then? You're going to the country. What country? <sighs> the countryside. You know, fields, cows, green wellies, mud. What am I going to do there? You're going to have a rest. More rest. And you're going to talk to a nice man called Benny. The department psychiatrist. Yes. I'm going to watch the grass grow and talk about my father fixation. You can talk about anything you like. I found you a charming little place. Let her get dressed. Dr. Ray, to go to bed five immediately. You're Nigel? Yes. Only the patient kept saying she had to see you when she was first admitted. What about? Well, she wasn't making an awful lot of sense, but she kept saying they put something in the drink. Nigel, the officer that found her said the same thing. I can ask. Boy, who put something in what drink? I have no idea. Well, don't you think we should find out? Perhaps. I've always thought the countryside's creepy. No lights at night. Rotten birds singing away early in the morning. Cow dung everywhere. Mind you. Yeah, it's nice. Fresh. Ask a while so people in the country get up early because they've got so much to do and go to bed early because they've got nothing to talk about. And that's just what you need. Nice long walks and lots of rest. When I hear the word rest again, I shall start hitting people. I wonder what the house is like. Nigel described it as a charming little place. Charming little place. I wonder what Nigel would call a big place. Buckingham Palace? Good morning, madam. I'm Mrs. Selwyn. Yes? I'm the housekeeper. I'll be looking after you. I'm perfectly capable of looking after myself. I'm sorry. She's not feeling too good right now. Oh, that's perfectly all right.
Do you have to clean in here right now? Oh, I won't be long. You've been paid to spy on me, haven't you? Spying on you? Oh, good heavens, no, of course not. Well, then, for God's sake, leave me alone! There's a gentleman to see you, madam. Let me guess. The office shrink. Hello, Mrs. Forbes. Miles Bennett. You're going to have trouble down here. Trouble? Why? No couch. I'll improvise. You met my keeper, Mrs. Selwyn. Housekeeper? I was wondering if you'd like some tea. Yes, Mrs. Selwyn, I would. Thank you. Does she have to be here? You don't get on. I just don't need her. I would have thought it would be nice to have someone to cook and clean up. So, what have they told you about me? You've been working hard. Maybe too hard. You know about the Miller fiasco? Yes. I came damn near to killing my own people. And yourself. I was in charge. So you're blaming yourself for what happened? Ending in a state of collapse on the street? You think that merits all this? A virtual house arrest, a guard, a psychiatrist? I don't know yet. It's nothing that a couple of days at home with my feet up wouldn't have cured. I've overworked before. You think that's all it is? Overwork? Yes. Look, I like my job. I don't have many other interests. Maybe I don't relax as much as I should, that's all. The way Nigel's blowing everything out of proportion, it's ridiculous. Being overtired is one thing, Mrs. Forbes. A blackout lasting several hours is something else entirely. I, I can remember... Handing over surveillance duty to the next shift. Then I set out to meet in the park to compare notes. Meet who? Uh, Red. And... And... Tessa. Yes. But you didn't get there. No. I wrapped my brains trying to... But I can remember nothing. It's a total blank. Yes. Make this quick. We'd like to know if Maggie took the blame for the cock up. Nope. Anything else? She talked about someone spiking her drink. It's being looked into. By who? That doesn't concern you. Well, we would like to look into it. You will stay out of it. Look, Nigel. You're a decent sort of bloke and all that. A good boss. Thank you. So what I'm saying is, don't go and blow it. Maggie is one of us. She's got a problem and we want to help her. Very well. Maggie was detailed to empty a dead letterbox the night she went missing. We were expecting a message of vital importance. However, it wasn't on her when she was found, and it is no longer in the DLB. And she can recall nothing about it. We need that message. Bennett, the department analyst, is handling her case. He may discover something in the course of his treatment. Liaise with him. is about three or four miles down the road. Yes, that's right. This is absolutely ridiculous. It that will make my life so much easier. Very nice meal, Mrs. Selwyn. I'll serve coffee in the drawing room. No, Nigel, I'm not going anywhere special. I would just like to have my car down here. I'll ask. Am I to be trusted with a car? 
He's nodding his head, Nigel. Have Fred drive it down. How long must you spend on the fruitcake patrol? On the what? Wyco Village, on me, Dr. Bennett. I can leave now if you want. Do you mean to say I don't have to answer your questions? I'm afraid I left my thumb screws in the office. Where are you staying? Nigel found me a pub in Tetchley. Are you married? Not recently. How many wives have you had? Two. Do psychiatrists make bad husbands? My first wife was American. We married when I had a practice in Boston. She thought she'd get free therapy. But she didn't? I even charged my mother. And number two? She was completely the opposite. She had no time for analysis. She used to accuse me of trying to raid her inner sanctum. You're raping my mind, was a popular phrase of hers. Were you? It's very difficult to violate a vacuum. Will you try again? I don't think so. Twice, but... You and I share the same problem. Oh? Like you, I have no consuming interest other than my work. Single-track people can be hard to live with. Yes. Nigel said the bar of this pub he booked me into is very pleasant. You know, I was just thinking it would be nice to get out of here. Looks like I've just raided your inner sanctum. What's it to be? Campari and soda. Campari and soda. Anything wrong? I've no idea why I asked for Campari and soda. I never drink it. Let me get you something else. No, it's all right. It's getting out of the house I needed more than a drink. Oh. Ah, ah. What's that? Ah. Sounds like a parrot. No, it's a, uh, uh, what do you call them? A minor bird. Yes, that's right. Can't see their attraction. Ah! What is it? What's that? That noise, it reminded me of, 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 of something. I don't know, it's gone. Ah! Ah! The Burman had tattoos on his arms. What are you talking about? Barman had tattoos on his arms, that's what you said. What barman? I got me a sudden picture. I had a flash of two arms pulling a beer pump. And there were tattoos up to the elbows. He seems to have been triggered by the bird. You were in a pub that had a minor bird. The barman was tattooed. You drank Campari. Maggie, try to think. It was like a dream. I had this sudden mental image just for a moment and then it slipped away. It's gone. Sorry. Let's get down to work. Where do we start? Well, Bennett told us that Maggie remembers being in a pub with a tattoo barman and a minor bird drinking Campari. So I'll take the pet shops and see if anyone's flogged a talking bird to a pub and you ring the breweries. Have you ever seen Maggie drink Campari? No. It's got a sharp taste. Well, I wouldn't know. I've never tasted it. It's a good drink to spike. The bitterness disguises whatever's added. Well done, Sherlock. Right. Good morning, sir or madam. We are trying to locate a tattooed parrot. Good 
morning, Mr. Selwyn. Is Mrs. Forbes in? She's gone for a walk, Mr. Bennett. She shouldn't be long. I see somebody delivered her car, but who does the van belong to? Who are you? I said, who are you? The department sent you. Why? They want the place wired up. What's all this surveillance stuff? I don't suppose you're with Mrs. Forbes 24 hours a day. No, but... I want to know everything she says, not just to you, Miles. If she finds out she's bugged, it could have a devastating effect. She may well think she's under suspicion. That's a risk we'll have to take. Is she? No, of course not. A bug on her phone hardly appears a sign of trust. Is she likely to go looking for it? Oh, not at present. She seems relaxed. But then you will have to make sure that she stays that way. That's what you people are supposed to be good at, isn't it? Mrs. Forbes is coming. You knew about this? Mr. Beaumont explained it would be necessary. Don't worry. Mrs. Forbes won't find out. I've had a lot of experience of these things. Was that? It came to mend the washing machine. It's always going wrong these days, I'm afraid. Good morning. How are you today? I'm fine. A blackbird that can talk like a parrot. Well, you know, um, pretty Polly. What a pair Do you of keep knockers on people who buy your pets. Well, we're looking for a pub that bought a minor bird. bird. Thank you. Oh, don't know. Bye. No. Oh, great. Your phone is back. Thanks. So, it was a feeling of guilt that preyed on your mind. Yes. Body in hospital. Couldn't sleep at nights. Look, I don't want to talk anymore. What about the list? What list? The list you were told to collect. I don't know what you're talking about. From the dead letter box. I wasn't told. On Clapham Common, there was a tree they used for drops. Think. Maggie. Think. There was nothing there. Where? In the roots of the tree. I put my hand in and I felt around and scratched my hand. The dead letter box was empty. Go on. Maggie, go on. It's coming now. It's coming. What were you looking for? What? I... I, I don't know. I, I can't remember. It was a list of names, wasn't it? It was a list. Yes. You saw it? No. No. I've told you. There was nothing there. Why don't you believe me? Why don't you believe me when I'm telling you the truth? So, the drop was empty. Oh. What did you do? Where did you go? You walked away from the common? Yes, I suppose so. You went to a pub. There was a minor bird there. The barman was tattooed. You drank Campari. Why? Who were you with? <laughs> Maggie! Mm -hmm. Maggie!
It's far enough. All right. You don't believe me. Yes, I do. You, Nigel? The whole damn department think I've chucked in with the other side. That's nonsense, and you know it. I've been set up. Nobody believes me. I've told you, I believe you. Why should you? You could be lying to me right now. I could be, but I'm not. I've only known you a few days, but I trust you. I can tell when somebody is fantasizing. It's my job to know. It's why I'm paid. Maggie, your amnesia began after you went to the dead letterbox. What did you do when you handed over your shift? Did you have a drink? Eat something? That's the gap we must fill. The hour after you finished your surveillance. <sighs> Hello? You found the pub we're looking for? Yes. A mine about Anne Obama with tattooed arms? What's it called? The Black Lion, and it's near Cap and Common. Brilliant, thank you very, very much. Did you see her in here last Friday night? Yeah. You're sure? Who are you? The law or something? She's a friend of ours. We're looking for her. Well, she sat over there, there an hour or more. When she left, she looked like she was over the top, know what I mean? How much over? Well, I don't know, I didn't serve him every time. Them? Yeah, she was with a bloke. What did he look like? Oh, a big fella, foreign. How do you know he was foreign? Well, when he ordered, he pointed at what he wanted. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean he's foreign. No, I suppose not. Hey, there's nothing wrong, is there? Did she leave with this fella? No. You're certain? Yeah, I remember her coming up to the bar on her Todd. Thought she was going to have another. I was going to tell her maybe she'd had enough already, you know what I mean? Well, then Samantha lets out a squawk, she jumps and breaks the glass. Well, so now she's on her own? Yeah. I never saw him leave, the bloke. Here. Now I know why I thought he was a foreigner. Why? He was drinking vodka, straight, no ice, nothing. And he knocked it back in one go, bang! You know, like a Russian. Stop asking me that, I don't know. Oh, what's, what's in this drink? But you told me it was changed. <laughs> oh, it's empty. There's nothing there. Don't believe me. I don't care. Oh, I hate this drink. Oh, I didn't know it was changed. Oh. you make of that? She's dreaming the dead letterbox location has been changed and she doesn't know where the new one is. What does that tell us? It could be just a typical anxiety dream. We all have them. Awful drink, empty tree. Her dream appears to be closely linked with reality. She must have been speaking to the man she actually met. Nigel, I can't ask her straight out who was the Russian in the pub or what exactly had changed. Why not? I'm a psychiatrist, not an interrogator. My main concern is for her mental stability. I have to go at my own pace. Miles, I have to tell you that your pace isn't good enough. What do you mean? We have pressing assignments in Eastern Europe. We want to send our men there, but we can't until we're certain they're safe. We won't know that until we see the list. You're asking me to put pressure on her. I can't do that. Someone has to. Someone else. Very well. Who? Me. I'm a trained interrogator. I still remember the basics. Don't worry, Miles. I won't use the rack. Mrs. Forbes remains in my professional care. I insist on being present and the right to intervene if necessary. I agree. Can I help you? I'm just browsing. I must know what you want. I'm in charge, yeah? Yeah, we all know that. Um, can I look at your duty rosters, please? Which ones? Surveillance, London, six days ago. Very well. Just go round and through the door. This is very inconvenient, you know.
find what you wanted? I found something. I don't know if I want it. Good afternoon, Maggie. I've explained the situation to Miles, and he's asked to be present. I've no objections. Yes, that's fine by me. Try and relax, Maggie. Sorry. Please remember that Mrs. Forbes has been very close to a breakdown. Of course. Well, Maggie, feel up to answering a few questions? Yes. Miles has done well to fill in some of your missing gaps, but some big ones remain. Nigel, believe me, I have tried to remember. Perhaps if we direct our aim a little more forcefully, something might emerge. Um, you said you recall nothing from the time you came off surveillance duty until you woke up in the hospital. Except for brief flashes, no. A public house, a barman with tattooed arms, a minor bird searching the base of a tree, finding it empty, drinking something you dislike. That's all. It's strange. You recall so much about this public house and nothing of the person you were with. I wasn't with anybody. You were with a man. He was foreign, according to the barman. Didn't you tell me you found the pub? He drank vodka in the Russian manner. Where is it? Where is this pub? Never mind that. I'm talking about the man you were with. You said to him, nobody told me it had been changed. I said it? What had been changed? How do you know I said that to him? Answer the question. I don't understand the question. What had been changed? I don't remember. I, 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 don't, I don't remember saying that. Maggie, calm down. Calm down. It's all right. For God's sake, go easy. Had the dead letterbox been changed? Is that what this man, this Russian, wanted to know? I can't remember any man. I can't. I can't. Did you tell him? How could I? You must have told him something. Otherwise, why did he leave before you? Well, how could I have told him? What did I know to tell him? You could have told him the names on the list. Everybody keeps talking about a list. I, I, I don't know anything about a list of names. Ah, uh, but you do. Are you in the hospital? Can't sleep at night. God, you had this place fired. What about the list? What list? The list. No, this is way out of order. Shut up and listen. What are you talking about? From the dead letter box. I wasn't told. On Clapham Common, there was a tree they used for drops. Think, Maggie. Think. I told you it wasn't there. If there was nothing there, how did you know you were looking for a list? I... I was told! You were not told the nature of the material you were ordered to collect. I was the only one who knew what it was, and I said nothing to you. <laughs> you will stop this now. Oh, hello. How's, um... Maggie? Hmm? Taking it easy. You know, that stuff can seriously damage your health. Really? And seeing as they're open. You know, I like your mind, lady. Right, what are you having? No, I want to do this. I'd like to buy you a drink. No. Here, that's him. You sure? Oh, that's the bloke, no question. Well, he ain't foreign, then. He's about as Russian as you are. One by the bed behind the picture. I'm sorry, Maggie. Washing machine repairman, right? 
Thank you, Mrs. Selwyn. I won't be needing you anymore. I'm sorry, madam. I was only obeying my orders. I know. Do you mind leaving us? Oh, that's a self-righteous anger over with. I still can't explain how I knew the drop contained a list of names. Maggie. What? Would you be prepared to try sodium pentothal? The truth drug? That's a crude name for it. The fact is, it can often help in cases of amnesia. I'll try anything. I'll need your written permission. Of course. I have some with you? I always leave it as a last resort. But that's what we've reached. Sign the bottom. Japanese food. I love it. Great. I know a terrific place back at Camden Town. I was supposed to wash my hair tonight. Looks clean enough to me. You're right. And I'm starving. Right. My car's over there. I just have to nip back to the office first. All right. What's that, Just back here. Yeah, but this is not your office, is it? What the devil is this? This is the mysterious Russian that was in the Black Lion with Maggie. John Fox, surveillance. Who told you to look for this man? Maggie handed over surveillance to him, and an hour later, he's spiking her drink and poncing about as a Russian. Who have you told about this? Just you. Does Bennett know? Does Maggie? Hmm? God knows how they got on to me. You too, Nick Fox. Come and have a drink, Ralph. Why aren't you at work? She'll be on surveillance, Fox. She has to have one. Just one drink, Ralph. Where are you talking to him, Maggie? Captain Conn. You saw the list. What did you do with it, Maggie? Oh, it's so hot. I feel faint. I feel so rotten. The list, Maggie. The envelope. Where is it now? Where did you hide it, Maggie? Um, Was it when you were with him? Yes. Was it somewhere in the pub? Was it? Yes. Whereabouts in the pub? Think carefully. In the garden. Under the stone urn. You put the envelope under a stone urn in the garden. Fox is gone. Don't trust him. All right, Maggie. That's good.
you. I changed the sodium pentothal in your case this afternoon for a harmless serum. Congratulations. Worth an Academy Award. The leak had to be you. You knew about Miller and all the other operations that went wrong. You knew them all. You were in the perfect position, privy to our innermost thoughts. Well done, all of you. Although your excessive zeal in tracking down Fran Fox came close to blowing everything. I told you, never to underestimate us, Nigel. I could do with a drink. We are at a pub. All right, I'll buy it. Blimey, O'Reilly, and it's not even Christmas. Maggie, yours is a Campari, I believe. <laughs> 